Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, didn't plan on doing any extra projects uh, this year. Uh, the idea was to work on the old truck uh, as much as possible, but family shows up uh, with parts in hand. Uh, pretty much can't uh, turn them away, so let's have a look at this little project. Got here Pontiac G5 and as you can see it's here to get some rockers put in on both sides. That's where we're gonna start replacing out these rotted rockers. Now First thing you gotta do is remove these uh, threshold weather stripping uh, pieces. There's three buttons in underneath the lip here, the weather stripping, one in the center and one at each end of these pieces. And then they're just glued down on the top. So get the heat gun out, get the heat gun out, warm this up so this will peel off a little easier. Uh, remove the inside trim here and the door seal because those new slip-on rockers uh, will come all the way up uh, to the seam, the pinch weld seam here. So hopefully this won't be uh, too big of a job. I just keep working away at this. I'll be back. See? Just like that. Adhesive. Button. 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 Now, these uh, inner panels, trim panels, they're just held in with these uh, these clips. As you can see there, they go in these slots. Uh, usually just give them a good tug and they'll pop off. And once they're out of the way, you just lift the, uh, the weather strip molding off and set it out of the way. And this whole area is now now opened up. And do the same at the back. Just uh, this just pops off of there. You know, peel this back. This is all opened up now. I can get in here, a little bit of soap and water, clean this up, and uh, see just kind of what rust damage is going on. And start measuring up for. Uh, installation of the new rocker okay this is all cleaned up I have to get out the get the grinder out and start seeing just what's going on here uh, I gotta get these uh, undercoating plugs out it looks like these uh, um, replacement rockers that they purchased like fit only inside of here um, there's none of this other detail, so as long as this metal's good, shouldn't be an issue. Lots of room to blend out uh, the filler after. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm only working on uh, the passenger side, but the driver side is getting done also. This thing is screwed. God. 
actually found some good metal. Got most of the rusty bit now, as you can see. Not much left under there. Chopped away. There's a little tiny bit of good metal, I think, at the back, back here. Be able to use to weld the end of this new rocker on and I think I won't have to use the whole piece uh, for at the front uh, it looks like it's not too bad up up under there should be able to weld into there and then I'll have a nice spot to do my body work and if you noticed the back door is missing I had to take it off because you can't you can't get this piece here up over this lip with the bottom of the door sitting there so yeah a little closer mechanism here 10 mil bolt it's just a boot with a simple plug connector four 10 mils on the hinges you know door comes off pretty simple pretty straightforward and there's a good outline of the hinge on the door so when i bolt it back up it should just fit right into place now what i'm going to do i've got most of this rust uh, uh, kind of sort of strip back uh, spray a coat of the old uh, rust converter on there is light coat help that out followed by some uh, hardware store rust paint kind of just uh, Kind of help this a little bit here because this rusted from the uh, The inside or uh, the outside going towards the in as opposed to the rest of it. It rotted from the you know the outside uh, inside out sorry and uh so we're just going to preserve that a little bit there. Now, I haven't done anything special quite yet. I chopped a little chunk out of here on the back. And this little bit here out of the front. Because, you know, this won't let you come up in with this curve on it. Because, you know, there's no curve here. Uh, so, now it looks like the piece needs to come back probably... Uh, about another inch or so and the only way to do that now is chop a little more out of here okay now there's also this curves this way so it's gonna be a tight fit right here where it's rotted out now I clip a little of that off so I can move this back and I'll show you the front the front here has like you know an extra Two to three inches there of material and i won't even need it i think i'll be chopping i think i'll be chopping this out somewhere probably down maybe even down this line if the, the what's left of the rocker uh, up under this front corner is good enough so let me do that i'll bring you back now you can see i take a couple of chops out of there to get it this far but this area here with the the flange that comes all the way up to the pinch welds uh, underneath the door seal now that's pretty much right in the center now that one and you can see this one's pretty much in the center as well let me get out of the there we go so that's going to come up not too bad now i said about chopping this off here you know what i think i'm going to leave that and i think i'm going to work uh, off this radius if i can because uh, that'll be a nice easy way to clean up it's going to be a little tight under that door but uh, the thing is, this, this door sitting a little low, there is no gap under here. Now, there's no extra room. There's not enough room to put a piece of metal underneath this door. So, yeah. Uh, yeah I'm gonna, I think I'm just going to weld down this seam, and I'll be able to butter that into that radius. And I should have enough room to taper this off into here somewhere, and I won't have to deal with that low spot on the door. Okay, so this now back here needs a little trim out of here so we can push this back into place find out where the chops are on the ends got the piece clamped in a couple of sheet metal screws holding it in place now i can pull these clamps or those clamps i should say make sure that door closes half decently uh, then mark the ends of the uh, pieces so I can trim them off and then proceed to clean up the rest of the underside along the flange that this has to weld to. So uh, this is looking good. 
Uh, I'll leave myself a little room to do some body work here on the end, not too much, so somewhere right probably about there. And then of course, uh, trim the back off, and I think I should be able to just pretty much come right up the seam here. So I'm actually gonna mark this uh, kind of along the inside. So, if you're watching, I uh, was just feathering the trigger uh, on the air chisel, went down there, knocked that. So I was only trying to get the first layer off. Yeah, there's some other holes and issues buried in here. I really can't do anything about that. This is supposed to be a quick fix, okay? Uh, that's when it happens when you're, you know, working for family for free. You know, you gotta, you know, do what you can. Now, that being said, uh... After I went through there with the uh, with the air chisel, got that uh, outside layer off, followed it through with the four inch uh, flap disc on the angle grinder, got it cleaned up here. Now I'm gonna um, I'm gonna spray this with a little bit of that black uh, uh, hardware store paint up in here, just to try to preserve this car for my niece that little bit longer because this is probably going to outlast what's going on under here before i pulled the uh, panel off went around with magic marker and uh, drew an outline so i know i need to take you know that all the, the paint off and you know about that much on each side of that so i got some weld surface uh, i don't think it's gonna be necessary to um do full welding on this i'll be like uh, doing stitch weld you know every quarter inch kind of thing all the way along like the rockers on the red truck now one second i'll show you how good they're still looking after a year okay so i put these in same way like uh over a year ago still looking pretty much like i put them in Things are pretty much trimmed to fit. Now I'm gonna have to try to stretch the under flange around the best I can, because they do not make these uh, panels to fit perfectly by any means. I got a nice fit here. It's clamped up tight under there at the flange. Up here, there's a bit of a pocket, and there's no real reason for that pocket other than it's just the way the piece is formed so I'm gonna have to get this to stretch down and around underneath so I can hook the flange up the best I can so yeah get out the punch flange tool now punch some holes in those and in those and then along the under edge so I have some welding holes a little trim here and it will be good oh and scuff and paint the uh, the inside of the repair panel okay flange all tacked here it's all tacked in out there plug welded I should say I'm gonna push these corners down here get some welds uh, welds on those and then try to get this to wrap underneath got this back door section uh, tacked in I'm gonna put some more tacks on here. I'm only going to tack this about every quarter inch. I'm not doing full seams. This rocker will probably outlast the car. Now I got this ready to go around here. Got that clamped underneath and the flange actually meets up quite nicely under there. But it doesn't follow through because these panels are very, very poorly made. They're um, half-assed uh, produced. I think they're probably just produced on some type of a brake press. So you can see it's great there but we're gonna be wide up here so I'm gonna try to stretch this as much as I can I've got a little chummy bar under the edge of the door 
uh, get some tacks along the edge of here and then use pry bars to wrap this around underneath and that's probably about the best it's going to be clamp it in everywhere I can and hit as many of these uh, holes that I've I've put in you can see that this is you know pulled up like that there's really really nothing I can do it's just the way the piece is made okay yeah like I mentioned earlier sometimes these don't exactly fit right because they're you know not exactly made to any super specific standard so I ended up using the hydraulic jack and a pry bar to try to manipulate this around that corner I think that's going to be good enough I'm going to get this all I'm going to do a full weld seam up along here then grind it off and that gives me that little half inch there to put some uh, fiberglass filler in um, this is what it is I don't know why it doesn't want to stretch into position uh, it hung nice at the back so I'm going to keep busy here uh, finish welding this uh, this in here and then I maybe move into the center this is gonna be crooked along the bottom I already know it I don't know why it just doesn't want to stretch so everything's tacked in at the back now here got a clamp on there start plug welding these or uh, if the plug welds don't match up to the flange at least weld the like here you know you can at least weld the edge of the uh, flange to the existing flange. It is what it is. I can't control uh, What happens from here on in just clamp it up and get some weld on it and skim it in uh, ABC glass plus so that's what the plan is now uh, You've seen me in other videos plug weld. It's no big deal. So I'm gonna do that go around and then put uh, a tack about every quarter inch all the way around every one of these uh, flanges where the where the metal overlaps and then get it ground down come back see what it looks like okay next day uh, I didn't have time to uh, get too far along here yesterday but uh, well all welded in all ground up had to put door back on I say uh, run out of time now I have to uh, I don't have a whole lot of time to work on it today either, so I'm gonna get some glass plus and fill in all these seams so they're sealed up. And that'll be all I get done today. Now it's been a few days. Uh, hopefully the rain holds off. And uh, yeah, where I left off was I put this uh, fiberglass filler on uh, the seams. And uh, what I did, just had that lightly sanded um, wiped it with some lacquer thinners and then applied that filler I didn't wipe any of the rest of it off because it has a, a little bit of an oil coating on it so a little bit of uh, fingerprint rust uh, considering we've had rain off and on that that light oil has protected um, the rocker uh, enough that I can uh, sand this with some 220 get rid of that a little bit of surface rust real quick and then you know apply some type of uh, a primer but right now get the DA sander out uh, sand back all this lumpy stuff extend this out uh, with some 80 grit um, so I can get some body filler on it and of course wipe it off uh, with some wash and grease mover or lacquer thinners uh, before applying uh, that coat of body filler So all the seams sanded with uh, 80 grit here, uh, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, wiped it down with some lacquer thinners, I'll get some plastic filler out, just blend this in like this is here, I'm probably only going to get to there with a little light skim of filler, you know. You're just trying to blend in uh, this this edge to the old material. So, you know, this comes up into the, into the B pillar here. So, you know, it probably only just going to come in around here just to blend that off. It's not a whole lot of body work. 
uh, needed to be done. The panel itself it is the piece in, in a whole. So uh, it's just the edges really that need uh, blended in. And that takes no time at all. So let me get some plastic filler mixed up and spread it on here. Now body filler is applied to all the seams. Uh, I had to go get some fresh because the stuff I had was like uh, probably almost two years old and the lid had been on and off the can numerous times so it uh, it started drying out. It wasn't uh, mixing very good. It wasn't applying nice and smooth. Uh, big difference between a fresh can of body filler and an old can of uh, body filler. But anyway, knock this down with some 80 grit, smooth it up. And then probably have to apply one more little thin coat and uh, uh, from there sand all that with 220, all of this with 220 and get some epoxy on it. I'll sand it up pretty much. Still got a little spot over there, but I'm just catching you guys up. Uh, yeah, gonna need a second coat of filler, but basically just a tiniest little skim coat, fill in some of these uh, imperfections like here. Uh, I'm not going balls to the wall on this one. It's just a quick tidy up, okay? Um, fill in the pits here, get it smoothed out a little bit better, and uh, and get it done and down the road. So what I did here, I changed pads on uh, port a cable uh, DA, put a uh, medium density pad on there, got the the freebie 80 grit disc from work. Uh, they're they're not made for body filler or paint. They're, they're metal finishing discs. I mentioned that in a previous video about getting these discs uh, for free from work. But uh, yeah, any other spots, uh, 80 grit paper on a block or even just 80 grit paper folded over uh, just to get around these uh, corners like that. Uh, so yeah, second coat of filler. And I'll knock that down, bring these back. Body works all nicely uh, touched up here. Some of the craters filled in. It's not going to be perfect. It's never going to be perfect. It's not supposed to be perfect. It's just a quickie job. Okay. So I'm uh, going to wipe this all down, the whole piece, uh, with lacquer thinners, and then get some 220 on the interface pad on the DA sander. Using the air sander because it's a little lighter weight and just a little more convenient and uh, I'm able to get underneath uh, this hinge here without uh, any issues. All right, everything all sanded with 220. It's not a fancy job. Um, as you can see I got, uh, got things kind of taped in here. I've already wiped it down with some wax and grease and we're going to go mix up some epoxy and apply it, uh, try to just apply it to the uh, actual repair uh, itself and the, uh, the new material. Um, now I'm going to keep the gun turned down really low so I don't get it, uh, you know, inside the vehicle because, you know, it's only partially taped in. So keep the gun down low, tight fan pattern, and just put it where it needs to go. Uh, epoxy applied here. Ah, uh, too bad. Had a little reactions going on. There's a little reaction there and up there, a little bit over here. Now this car is just drenched in undercoating. So it is quite possible that, uh, you know, the wax and grease remover just not enough to, to battle with uh, that, uh, that type of a substance. So uh, I think it's going to be okay. Um, hang the door later and then move to the other side so this can cure for a couple of days 
Okay guys, so here's the driver's side. I'm ready to put the uh, leather stripping back on. Uh, I still have to mount the uh, door seal slash threshold strip with some 3M tape and uh, some push-in uh, weather stripping clips. So I'll have to punch a couple new holes. Not a big deal. This is basically as far as I'm going with this. Um, going to tape in from about right where the door closes, like right here, uh, up and then underneath. I'll give it a I'll give it a little stone guard treatment. But that's it. There's there's no frills, no extras. Throw a new set of rockers on it, tidy it up a bit. Buried that in three wet coats of epoxy primer. These rockers are going to outlive the rest of this car. So anyway, just a quick cleanup, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and as always, till the next one, peace.